Willis, Faber and Dumas brought aside and asked Foster to design a building with all the latest equipment and a standard of amenities high enough to encourage 1,400 staff to move into the provinces. Foster's solution covered every inch of the ground. It was clad from top to bottom in an apparently seamless membrane of suspended glass. The Willis-Faber building is a startling contrast to some of the others nearby. This really is a concrete jungle. It stands deserted, bleak, ominous, unused and vandalised. It's typical of a multitude of misfortunes that have brutalised city centres in the name of comprehensive redevelopment. Foster approached his task in a radically different spirit. We could follow the pattern of those existing office buildings. Floor, stacked on floor, on floor, generated around a central lift and stair tower, each level being essentially the same, perhaps apart from the number on the door. Surprisingly, really quite a lot of glass for the amount of office area involved. And again, that in sharp contrast to the hinterland of Ipswich with these lower, deeper building blocks coming up to the meeting house, the solitary tree in front of it. And maybe we followed this rather familiar modern pattern and we might have a lower office building alongside it. Spaces that are really rather meaningless around and the roofs essentially thrown away. Now we opted to go in a different direction and the direction that we that we followed was to be inspired by a number of examples from the past, if you like, not the least being the existing urban fabric of Ipswich. And that was to respect the pattern of the overall low buildings, the nature of the more winding streets, and to produce a building that would respect that and would be an overall deeper, lower building. In some ways, very much in the spirit of 19th century models, whether those are corn exchanges or whatever in the north of England. And on top of this deep building, we're recreating the site at an upper level as a garden. It's a nice place to be, but with some quite nice fringe benefits. And in this main kind of uh, circulation route in the heart of the building, which enables us to get sun right down into the, into the building. Glass, obviously, around the edge, so we can look out and also get that top light. Movement up through the building by escalators far more civilized than, uh, than lifts. And in that same spirit, recreating the tighter spaces on the, uh, on the street edge. On the outside, the Willis-Faber building is self-effacing. Though transparent by night, it remains a dark secret by day. Unless you know your way round, it's even difficult to find the door through a maze of reflections. But once you are inside, it has the glamour of a super cinema, complete with a stairway to the stars and potted palms, luxuriating in a world of light and colour. If you think of most office buildings, you come in, uh, the highest standards are in the entrance hall, and they gradually diminish down to the, to the workplace. Here it's the reverse. As you come up to the workplace, to the office floor, the standards increase. 
Upstairs, it feels like being on a ship. The eye roves over those parts that other architects conceal. The roof is a lattice work of steel, which keeps out the rain, but lets in the sun. The view from the bridge is magnificent. Ipswich has gained a park in the sky, in a space that in other buildings is usually used by pigeons, window cleaners and maintenance engineers. Flat roof, yes, but on the other hand, um, it's pretty maintenance free. I mean, it cut the, uh, the turf and it's a nice insulating quilt. Um, it's a good place to sunbathe, it keeps the heat in, um, it eliminates expensive expansion joints across the building. Again, it's working at a number of levels. I mean, it recreates, if you like, the site um, at roof level. There was a lot of discussion on the design. I mean, 10 years back, um, it did seem very radical, I mean, in terms of its use of glass. But it's used in a very direct manner. I mean, glass is immensely strong when it's suspended, and the glass is truly suspended around the edge. There really isn't very much for the amount of floor area, far less than in a traditional office building, although probably the appearance rather belies that. Um, but at the end of the day, efficiency really is a total equation. The building has to be a happy place to be. If it's not a happy place to be, uh, then it won't be, it won't be efficient. It looks almost too extravagant and glamorous to be an office building. Surely there was a price to pay. It was quite carefully audited uh, during its design period, which was 10 years ago, um, and uh, was on par with, um, uh, with standard office, office construction. So, I mean, it wasn't, if you like, a prestige building in that sense. It didn't come with an inflated budget. It was, um, it was, a, it was a standard rental office budget. For every eye-catching feature, Foster has a rational explanation. The ceiling was consciously designed as a dynamic um, element, I mean, in terms of its reflection, uh, in terms of creating, if you like, a, a certain sort of light-heartedness, a certain fun, but at a very serious level, it's working acoustically. Um, the light fittings, which were specially designed for the building, are low-brightness fittings, so you're not getting glare. In energy terms, you're reducing the number of uh, fluorescent tubes by a half, and that's a prime source of energy in a building, so you're cutting down the heat load as source. Um, and there are a multitude of things around that ceiling. I mean, whether it's to do with sprinklers or emergency lighting. Um, but at the end of the day, it's very much a visual element. Um, and that is, you know, that was a key design decision, what it would look like, how it would shimmer, how it would reflect, how it would, as it were, enlarge dimensionally the, the feeling of the space. It all feels spacious and spectacular, full of life and movement. As you ride through the building, you realize that between the thick layers of floor, there's hardly a wall or a door in sight. It's not the place to arrive late or to leave early. When you get to the ground floor, you find a swimming pool. The water's like a sheet of glass, flush with the raised lips of the bath. It was a very difficult site, um, close to the river, so it would be expensive to, uh, to go down. The building doesn't have a basement uh, for those reasons. Um, but on the other hand, there's a fall across the site. So the, um, that part of the building where the swimming pool is, is lower than this end of the building. So we take advantage of that, uh, of that fall. So we're not really excavating to make the swimming pool. But yes, again, um, it's more expensive to put a swimming pool there than it perhaps is to use it for uh, paper storage or, or whatever. Some companies spend a small fortune on showcases, decorations and window display. Here there are no pictures on the wall and no modern sculptures in the hall. Foster and his designers make a virtue of necessity. The building and its working parts are the art. Humble and unromantic things like boilers, plumbing, generators and ventilation plant instead of being hidden in dark corners, are brightly painted and boldly displayed. Yeah. 
the building is an integration of, uh, of systems, the systems that are used to hold the building up, uh, to keep it cool, to provide light. A lot of those were specially designed for the building. They're integrated and you really can't see them um, because the things that work in a building, if they're really working, you're not aware of them. Foster believes that good architecture needs a creative relationship between the architect and his client. There has to be some care. Somebody has to want to do a, a good building. Um, you can call it patronage if you like. You can call it loving care. It's not expediency, it's not shortcuts. You have to work at it. And that means everybody. If somebody wants a building, then they really have to take some trouble about it. Um, they won't resolve it on the golf course. Um, so we talk about Willis Faber, whatever. I mean, they didn't take shortcuts. 